Hi everyone, in this video, in this tutorial, I want to show you how we can make a simple filter, uh, a face mask, with uh, some cute character that appears on both of the person's cheeks. That's it, that's what we're going to have, kind of a cute unicorn illustration on both of your cheeks. Something very cute. So, uh, Let's dive straight in and let me show you how you can do this. You can, of course, always repeat the steps. Uh, and in the description of this video, I'll be provide you uh, with a project file so you can load it uh, in Spark Air Studio yourself. Uh, and also, uh, because these are the first tutorials that I make, also check out the description of this video, which will lead you to uh, the website uh, which you can download Spark Air Studio for your Mac or for your uh, Windows. All right, so let's begin. So as I mentioned in the first video, you know we are making a face a face mask. So what we need, first thing we need to do, if you're working with something relative to the face, we need to add a face tracker. Uh, to do this, we need to go to uh, here to add object, and we're gonna add. Uh, we're going to add a face tracker to the scene. Now the way I'm teaching is, is straight away because this is the way I learned it. I actually have an idea that I want to make and I make it. I This is the opposite of some of the tutorials or other ways of learning where people explain to you everything about user interface but for me the easiest thing to learn is through engagement and start working on projects straight away and finding out the tools that I need in order to make them. Even now there are still things that I don't know and I learn on the way. But for me, this was the fastest thing that uh, fastest way for me to learn, and that's what I'm teaching you. But of course, there are other type of tutorials which you can use, more advanced ones. But again, I'm starting step by step, uh, and I want to work on project to get you motivated to start working with Spark AR Studio. So we're going to add a face tracker. So again, I'm going to show you. You're going to click Add Object, or this you can also right click here and choose Add, and then choose a uh, face tracker, this one here. So this is the first thing, uh, which uh, adds a face tracker node uh, here to the scene. Now, everything else that we're going to add that we want to uh, be relative to the face, we need to put it under this tree. Now there are other options which you can use uh, using code, but of course this is much more advanced. We're going to talk about it in future videos, but we want to keep things simple. So we added a face tracker. We also can rename it. Um, uh, let's just call it face one. Double, cl uh, double, uh, two times. Tapping two times, and we'll be able to rename it. Let's just call it face one. All right. And underneath it, we are going to add uh, what's called a face mesh. Now this is a three D object that uh, Sparker adds. Uh, it's built in. I don't need to import it uh, uh, from uh, your computer. It's just built in in the software, and it puts uh, a mask that uh, automatically adjusts its size uh, to fit perfectly to the face of the user. So right now, because it's uh, uh, I just uh, uh, put it in, it just has this black and white squares. But we're going to change it very very soon. By the way, what you see here, this window, this is the 3D view. Uh, if you want to see how the mask will look like, you have this little window here, which you can drag and enlarge. Right now is uh, for iPhone uh, perspective, uh, width and height, but you can change it by tapping here and changing other things around for Android devices. So you can see how it will look like if you're using uh, different devices. And you can resize it. So this is actually how it looks like. And there's a person there uh, virtual one, a video that shows the person with the mask, but you also you can also change the person by just clicking this icon here, video, and you can choose even to use your own computer camera to see how it looks like on your face with your laptop or uh, webcam. Or you can choose another person if you like. All right, so we're going to continue. So we added a face mesh. Now, what we want to do is to put an image of the unicorn uh, on uh, both uh, sides of the cheeks here, one here. Now, uh, in with this uh, area, I can control it 
control it using my arrow and pressing the control if I push press control button and use the left mouse click at the same time and rotate the mouse I can rotate through the scene like this if I want to move it up and down I use alt on Windows and then use the mouse left mouse button holding both of them and I can use it this allows me to see how things look I can also use the um, scroll button on the mouse to move forward and backward I'm going to use this one in order for me to observe and see how things look like as I continue working on my effect okay so right now I want an image of a unicorn I actually downloaded one you can find yourself an uh, image of a unicorn and I'm going to move to Photoshop because I actually uh, will need it in order to position the unicorn on the face and let me explain to you how it works all right we're in Photoshop now you can use any other software I'm using Photoshop because it's Adobe Photoshop because it's the most comfortable for me and I'm used to it so uh, this is the image that I download it's a PNG image uh, which transparency so these squares are actually just show that it's transparent and I'm using uh, um, a mesh tracker uh, image that provided by Spark QR. I'm going to link to it in the description of this video so you can download it yourself. Uh, what this uh, image does, it just uh, shows me um, uh, the wireframe of the of the mask, which means uh, what you see here, these guidelines are going to be aligned, including those dots that represent certain points, uh, facial um, areas on the face they're going to be aligned to the face of the user so it's not going to be flat think of it kind of a paper we just we're going to put it uh, uh, on your face and it's going to be aligned perfectly on the user's face so what I want to do is to position and this is just for guideline I'm not going to use this image uh, this is just for me to uh, it allows me to position images in certain areas so let me explain to you what I mean so I'm going to take this uh, unicorn uh, image and bring it uh, to uh, the mesh tracker image. What I'm doing right now, I'm going to reduce the size of it. Let's put it like this. Now I want it to be on the left and right cheek. So as you can see, I can see that the right cheek is here, the left cheek is here. So I can just position it where I want it. Let me reduce the size a bit. Rotate it like this. And I'm going to put it about here. Now there's another one. Uh, this is called a face a feminine. There's also a masculine one, which gives you also a rough idea, but more you know, visual. I'm going to drag it here just so you can see. So I can see how it looks like. You can use this one as a reference or this one as a reference. <coughs> Doesn't matter. I use uh, actually use, uh, use this one uh, most of the time. Uh, and one, what I want to do now is position it on the right cheek and then I'm going to duplicate the image. And rotate it a bit and put it on the left cheek. So again, this is the right cheek, this is the right eye, the left eye, this is the mouth, this is the nose area. So if you want to put something, for example, if you want to put a um, unicorn in the nose area, I can just move it here. But I'm going to put it here because I want those other two cheeks. Cool. Now I want this image. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to have the uh, this uh, um, wireframe image. So I'm just going to remove it. And this is actually what I want. As you can see, if you look, you can see it's a 1024 uh, by uh, uh, 1024 by 1024 uh, pixels for both uh, width and height. So that's the resolution we are going to use. So it's actually a square image. All right. So I'm going to save this one. 
and I'm going to bring it inside to Spark here to continue working on it. Now, one important thing that I haven't mentioned before is that when you export the mask, uh, if you want it to the unicorns to appear, only the unicorns without any background, you need to uh, export it as, as with transparency. So only the uh, the certain uh, part of the image that you want to appear uh, are actually opaque uh, and pixelized, and the other areas are transparent. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to import uh, import from my computer, import the image from my computer, the one that we just did in Photoshop, did the two unicorns. All right, it's here. So once I added an image, it's going to automatically appear under a textures folder. And as you can see, this is my unicorn's mask. And you can see a preview here on the right side, the two cute unicorns. And uh, compressing means it's it also automatically compresses the image. Uh, I think I'm going to talk about compression later on. Uh, usually I use no compression, but it, it depends on the image. But just for uh, to give you understanding, you know, it also shows you the size of the image here. So again, I imported the image. And what I'm going to do now, I wanted to assign this image to the face mesh itself. Now to do this, what I first need to do, because I can't put just the image under the face mesh, I want to it to be part of the mask uh, of the uh, face mesh itself. So what I need to do is add a material to the face mesh. This allows you to modify its look. So I'm going to go here. You first need to tap face mesh and then go to materials and click the plus button. Now the default one is a white one, white color one. What we need to do now is go to the material and change its properties. There are two options to do this. First one is go to the materials here and tap it. Then you're going to see the properties here. Another option is in the face mesh, double click the material name that was added. Material zero is by default. So these are the properties of the material. Here you can change different things to make the uh, face mesh look, you know, create something that I want it to be. So uh, what we need to do here is use our image, the unicorn image, under the texture area here. You see shader properties, diffuse texture, click choose. Oh, sorry, don't click to choose. It's actually choosing from your computer. But because I already import it, I can just click this button and choose Unicorn Mask. It will automatically show me the textures which are available inside Spark Herald. Because I imported only one, which is Unicorn's Mask. This is the one which is, is available. So I'm clicking. And look at this. Those unicorns appear on the face mesh. And the beauty of it, I mean, you can import it. By the way, you can import an image under the face mesh, uh, under a face tracker. But just want to show you how it looks like. I need to add, I'm going to explain to it later in later videos, but I'm just going to do it quickly. And I'm going to put it, uh, I'm going to show you why this is not the way to do it. So if I just import it as an image, uh, let me just enlarge it and put it in as a rectangle. You can actually see it right now, but I'm going to rotate it. You see, it's just a flat image. It's not actually aligned with the face on the face curvature. This is why we need the face mesh because when I use, uh, I'm going to remove it. When I use it like this, it actually sits beautifully on the face. And as you can see, as the face moves, it just sits on the face, like on the face's skin. You see? Now it changes a bit of lighting because, mm, let's remove this one, because it's standard. So it's actually the lighting of in the scene affected. But if I want it just to be flat as it is, I'm going to use flat. And in this case, I actually want to use flat, 
because I want the color to be originally as in the image. All right. So again, it remembers its texture is the same, Unicorn's Mask. And as you can see, there you have it. A simple message. What I did is just uh, download the Unicorn image, position it uh, where I wanted it on the um, area on the face in a photo editing software, export it as a transparent PNG. This can a PNG 24 bit because I want it to look clear and sharp. Import it into Spark ER Studio and assign it to the material under the face mesh. Now, so what you can actually do is right now you're gonna can export it and upload it like it is now to your uh, Spark ER Studio uh, section on Facebook and share it on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, about exporting, I'm gonna explain it in a later video, but generally speaking, you go to, um, to upload and here, if you can export the file, she will generate a file that will be uh, you'll export, uh, you upload to Facebook or uh, to Spark Air, um, uh Effect Management uh, website. Or you can also, if you already have uh, the effect available, you can update it or publish it, it through the software itself, but just clicking upload. But again, I'm going to show it to you later on in a, a later video. All right. So what, one last thing that I wanted to show you, uh, because right now if you upload a mess like this, many people might like it. But we're gonna add uh, uh, a bit of retouch, sm uh, face smoothing. So this is the last thing I want to show you. What we need to do is add another face mesh. Now, right now it's covered the previous one. Uh, but what we're going to do now, uh, of course I can hit it and you can see the other one still exists. We just have two of them, uh, just one is over the other. So with this one, we're gonna, I'm double tapping, I call it face, face smooth. And I'm gonna create material for this by clicking again material, create new material, material one. I can also rename, double tap, and rename it and call material smooth, not smooth. Here, again, we're going to go to the material. This is the first material, so we're going to tap material smooth. We're going to see the properties under the right side. And then what we're going to do is tap the shader type and to uh, choose retouching. Now we can choose whether to make it full screen or just the face and choose the amount of smoothing we want. You can see it already applied to the face, face is smoother, zero is uh, actually like it's deactivated, and you can put it, you know, just decide on the value that you think looks best. So that's it. Uh, now uh, all you need to do is just test it on your device, and again I'm going to explain to you how it looks like. Uh, you can do this, uh, you can do this either from uh, test on device, or through the um, Spark AR portal, but again, in a later video. But this is just a simple video that shows you how in a few steps you can create a really cute looking mask with some uh, uh, face smoothing and people can like it and share it and enjoy it. It's very, very simple. Of course, you can use your own designs, whatever you like, <coughs> and position things, whatever you want on the face. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, and that's it. That is for this video. I won't bore you with other advanced things because I want to keep things very simple. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't forget to ask me in the comment section of this video. And I'm going to put this project um, uh, link uh, so you can download it in the description of this video as well. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video in the next tutorial. And again, we're going to do so many amazing things uh, over time. These are really basic things because I want you to get motivated and see how simple it is to create Spark Air filter. So we will want to create those yourself. And we'll talk about other than things uh, in other videos. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye bye.